Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'd like to take a look at Weebly version 4, which was just released a day or two ago. So what Weebly is, is it's an all-in-one package for building uh, websites, but more specifically e-commerce stores are their focus there online. And instead of having to install everything for yourself, go ahead and gather plugins and other things like you would WordPress, the nature of it being all contained is that basically it's all built into their um, their site editor and you don't really have to worry about going and picking up too many other things though they do actually have uh, apps that you can install to go along with the base Weebly package and I'm not 100% sure but I think these are kind of third party where other people yeah pixelbits.io for this one for instance where um, other developers or other companies can basically make apps that integrate into Weebly and that can give you additional functionality within the context of Weebly. So it's not like it's 100% Weebly, it's uh, Weebly as the base and the base does cover a lot of things. So you can see in the elements section, um, basically everything in Weebly is drag and drop. So it's simple enough that I think just about anybody can do it as long as they know how to use a website to begin with. So right now we're on the store page as you can see up here. We can start dragging these blocks in, such as adding a title in, adding a text block right below it, so a paragraph, and then clicking to edit using bold underline italic. Not much different than Microsoft Word, honestly. Uh, but in addition to that, you can actually choose uh, page layouts by going to the pages section. So for the header type, we could do something like a landing page header which will immediately give us a default image, uh, space to edit a title, button text, that kind of thing. And to get that kind of thing in other uh, systems like WordPress, that's going to be what I'm comparing it mostly to since that's what I've used the most. Uh, you don't really need to go grab third party plugins. So to do that in WordPress, you would need a page builder, which you can pick up like Visual Composers, about 30 bucks on ThemeForced. But here it's just built in, and uh, even in the free version of Weebly, that's what I'm on right now, you can upgrade for additional features like you can see down here. Uh, a search box, that's probably the main thing I would say is missing from the, uh, the base package. Because a search box is pretty useful, and I think you would definitely want that for an e-commerce store. But you still do have a lot of features here just to try it out for free. So let's go ahead and drag some other features into the page. I'll add a divider here. We're not going for a super slick web design um, on the fly, but you get the idea. You'd play around with this a bit, a little bit, uh, maybe have someone come up with a layout for you, and then you just kind of drag and drop to create it. So let's put a newsletter form down here just for right now. So when you create these newsletters, you not only have the buttons created for you, but you can also go into form options to change some of the settings within it. And when you're done, you can just go ahead and click save. So Weebly, as I understand, recently added the whole newsletter thing with Weebly Promote, or you can find it at promote.weebly.com. And this is another thing that's pretty nice because without an all-in-one package like Weebly, you'd pretty much need to go with something like MailChimp or Aweber to handle your uh, mailing system. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but then you have your resources um, separated into multiple different sites. And that's not something I really like too much. So the fact that you can basically manage your newsletter mailing lists straight within Weebly, I think that's a pretty cool plus in the new version. Okay, now let's go over to the theme tab and click on change themes so that we can see what themes are available to us. You don't have to pay extra for them. And the thing about that is that in most cases, um, I, I would say themes that look roughly this good, you would probably need to be paying a premium for something like the X theme or Avada inside of WordPress, which usually runs something like $60. So that's actually a pretty nice plus. I mean, if you're going to be building an e-commerce store, you're probably going to be spending money on it anyway. Um, and you have different kinds of categories over here. Online store being the first one. So obviously that's what Weebly's focused on business, which is going to be very similar, just maybe with some extra pages that aren't a store. Portfolio, personal, event, and even blog. So all these themes, they're very modern. They're spacious. They don't clutter up the screen too much and they look pretty well designed. One concern I did have was about the level of customization you'd have within Weebly, but if you go to if you get sick of the stock background, there's a lot you can use by going to change background 
So we can just select one of these here, something that maybe fits our store if we're doing like a grocery store type thing. Or you can just upload your own image. Uh, I would suggest checking out Pixabay if you need background images. You can use those for free, even commercially, without necessarily giving direct credit. Because um, they're all public domain, which is nice. Let's go over to the store tab. Um, so inside Weebly, you can find your orders here. You can create coupons if you're on the business plan. You can add products to the store, which we'll do in a minute. And you can add in taxes for the various countries you may be getting customers from. So as far as payments go, I know you can use PayPal, which is nice, but also Stripe. I've seen that coming up recently and a couple others, Square and Authorize.net. So Weebly doesn't do the transaction processing for you, but it should integrate just fine with these other payment processors since they've set it up to do it out of the box. So let's go ahead and try creating a product. That's one of the things people are going to need to do a lot of. So import products. Let's see, you can do CSV files. You can also import from other competitors like Etsy and Shopify. Shopify is going to be one of the big ones out there. And we can go to add product. So let's do this. Create a product name. We'll call it test product. Very original, I know. This is a good buy. <laughs> okay, don't hire me to write your product descriptions, please. But uh, let's see, product type, physical goods, digital goods. So product type, you can do physical goods, digital goods, and services. So that's covering basically all the transactions people would generally do online. You can set prices, base prices, and sale prices, which would be the discounted price. The weight of the product uh, defaulted to pounds for me, and I assume that's because I have a U.S. account. Serial numbers, inventory tracking, which is pretty nice. Uh, whether you want the product to be currently visible or not, and should it show up in the storefront. Whether or not to charge sales tax for it. Not every single product has sales tax. For instance, if you happen to be running a food store, I believe food still does not uh, charge sales tax at all in the U.S., and then we could add in some product images. So I'll just use this Fillmore logo. And let's look at the advanced options, which pretty much come down to SEO titles. If you want it to show differently in the Google search engine than you do on the actual page. So let's save that. And then we'll go ahead and preview it. So we have the image over here, the base price, the sales price, social media share links, uh, the ability to set a quantity and add it to the cart. So more than likely this page is looking very barren to you and you're going to want to add in some extra elements to the product pages so you can always drag and drop other new things and for instance you could add a youtube video if you wanted here of the actual product so at the end of things you have the site settings including site title whether you're using an ssl certificate the ability to set a favicom which is the little icon that appears up there in your web tabs Connecting your Weebly site with Facebook for better social media presence. Uh, let's see, SEO. So adding footer and header code, which can include things like Google Analytics or other things that you may need to have running in the background for your site. And here you can create additional editor accounts for people who you want to have access to the site's back end. And here you have the ability to set more editor accounts if you want more people than just yourself to have access to the back end. You can also see all of the members who have signed up for your site. Notably here, allow people to register for your site if that's something you want them to be able to do to actually register an account and not just to create a single order. That may be something very relevant to you. And here you can see all of the apps that you've set up with Weebly. Let's go to the App Center and take a look at some of the ones that are available to you. So looking through some of the popular ones, you can see that there's a lot of extra functionality that you can add into your Weebly site from third party sources, which is the whole idea of plugins and packages like Drupal or WordPress, uh, the standard content management systems. But the main thing that Weebly does differently is makes it really simple out of the box with a drag and drop interface that just about anyone can use their base packages. And that minimizes the amount of time that you're going to need to really mess around with your site. You can just get it up and running and focus on promoting whatever you're trying to sell. But at the end of the day, you still do have access to other plugins which you can directly integrate. So for instance, if you're kind of a code geek and you want to be able to display HTML, CSS code, or maybe PHP, on your site because you've kind of got a programmer's blog going on you could add this plugin in 
which would basically connect straight into Weebly without having to download anything. Um, keeping in line with that really easy to use interface that's straightforward for everybody, not just for developers. And we can go back into Weebly and start using it. So here we have the third party code block. Although it's a third party app that we added into Weebly, it's set up in the same way where it's very simple to use. So we'll just drag this over here and I will start editing some code. So let me grab something. Now to demonstrate this specific plugin, I'm first going to click on it, go to set syntax, make it PHP, because that's the type of code we're gonna display here, for whatever reason. You would never do this on your actual home page, I think. But we will uh, delete that, copy and paste the new code in, and you see it automatically color codes everything based on the PHP programming language. So that's just one example of bringing in a third party app to use in Weebly. So in conclusion, Weebly 4 seems to have some pretty nice things going for it, being almost entirely self-contained, being able to easily set up payment processing and a store right out of the box. And because there's also built-in newsletter functionality and the ability to use third-party apps that easily integrate into the Weebly interface, I think there's about everything you need here as a typical store owner looking to bring a we online website presence. So I would say if this is the kind of thing that interests you, definitely give Weebly a shot. You're probably going to want to check out Shopify as well to kind of compare the two packages. They are very similar in what they do. But if you'd like to check out Weebly, I do have a link in the description for this video. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this review of the new Weebly 4. And I'll see you in my future content.